Hello, everybody. Uh, it's Frank Norris from the Frank and Stan chat. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, just the Frank and Stan show this, today. So uh, hello, Stan. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Uh, very well, considering. I think I think actually starting to get to me now, the, uh, the not going out and the, uh, the, the lockdown bit. After all this time, he's starting just to, uh, to dig at me a bit. Right, right. Well, I, yeah. I think I felt a little bit um, depressed, miserable, fed up with life last week. Um, and, you know, you, you sort of reflect on what you like with your partner, you know, and whether or not you're, you're nice to live with and whatever. So, um, yeah, uh, had a bit of reflection. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think just that we're here doesn't mean to say we're not sort of immune from feeling miserable you know um no. and i think I, I, i'm constant you know just in the morning thinking well you know as, as happened this morning what we're doing today well the same as very, nothing very like nice. every day uh, and uh jill's knee's not been so good so we've not been walking even so it does feel like you you sort of blocked in yeah it's funny Tesco shopping becomes a highlight, you know. <laughs> well, we have a um, uh, a pub nearby. It's about a mile and a half away, and uh, they've they've turned their little sort of uh, courtyard into a coffee area where you can go and get takeaway. So, um, the highlight of uh, our week tends to be the walk to the church, buy the coffee, and then uh, sit on. <laughs> it sounds really miserable, but there's a little bench in a graveyard of a church nearby. <laughs> And sip, sip coffee. That's really quite enthralling. <laughs> but the, the graveyard's full of uh, trees and what have you. So, and it's quiet. And um, but actually, it's the it's the walk there, isn't it? And it's the chat on the way. And you know, just yeah. and actually, the w weather's not been that bad. Um, it's it's not been that cold. Um, it's it has. There's been a lot of rain, but it but we, it hasn't stopped us going. There have been days when it's been lashing down, and we're still gone. You know. Uh, yeah. But um, anyway, is it, what's caught your eye this week? Anything? Well, oh. uh, two things really that fit together. The SAGE report saying that, that schools were, are actually now a, a main source of uh, the spread and a letter from the Health Secretary and the Education Secretary. Do we still have an Education Secretary? I've not seen him for a while. Um, but um, saying to public health, you must keep schools open virtually. That they've, they've, there's a tier system that I wasn't aware of that will include schools where uh, a tier four, I'll get this wrong, I won't say which is which in case I'm giving false information, but at various tiers, schools either go into rotor systems or year group closures or whole closures, but those tiers haven't been put in place yet. But it just, if, if, we, if we're going off the science and we're trusting our health people, how come the education ministers to say to to public health no you mustn't close schools that yeah. it just feels them not right yeah um well related to that i mean i've just come off a call um with uh, about 30 um blackpool head teachers and special head teachers um i won't tell you um what you know, they were saying about you know anything because i think i haven't got their permission to do so um specifically but the issues that they're they're concerned about um are around you know how we get how that how is the government going to manage a safe closing of schools um so that christmas they're, they're not seeing staff regardless of whether it's a festival or not but during a holiday actually using all that time just to self-isolate you know um because what will happen is that i think I'm, I'm very clear the, the head teacher the head teachers and teachers I'm meeting look shot at the moment yeah I agree Frank and it happened at half term because a colleague of mine was saying that his, his wife's a head teacher and she was on pins the last week because their holiday at half term depending on her not having to go into isolation yeah. so the yeah. week before <clears> was really tense week but I agree I, I you know the heads that I see and talk to are weary I think that the word is that they're, they're, they're just 
now at the point of dealing with anything day to day and and nothing beyond that yeah i mean it's interesting a colleague made the made the point um, at the end of the discussion, just around um, moderation, internal moderation of work, you know, which is something which schools, um, primary schools particularly were red hot on, you know, just to yeah. ensure that, you know, we were clear about um, whether or not child A or child B was, was actually where we think they ought to be. Um, of course, that can't happen. As she was saying that, you know, you, you uh, handling other, other children's work outside of your bubble means that that work needs to be isolated for 72 hours, you know, and just the concern that, you know, if we don't have uh, governors who are aware of these challenges, there's little chance that we're going to have a Secretary of State aware of these challenges, you know, I, I, you know, so, you know, it, it really is important that all those lines from where the head teacher and teachers are through governance into local authorities into MPs into government all of that is very clear you know so that you know that that's the only way we're going to convince people that you know we've got to be very very careful with the profession at the moment that you know the whole thing could could fall over. Well I think it's close to that I mean I can't remember the statistic now the number of schools that have had closures but it's it's something like well, it, depending on the region. I know in in Greater Manchester, it's it's an enormous amount of, of schools that have, have had some disruption, and yet we still have got this this view that exams are the fair way of doing it, and therefore there will be exams. When it's it's kind of I know it's foresight, but if it carries on, at some point they're going to have to cancel the, the exams. So why not do that now and put in a serious moderation programme, yeah. uh, particularly at GCSE, so that, that schools can work now on some kind of moderated test that they can share between groups of schools and then we know that there's some an element of robust nature about the judgments. Yeah. I, I just it's this delay again in something that almost looks inevitable. And even if they you know there's no further disruption. There have been children that have been, or students that have been four weeks, six weeks out of school. So how is it fair? How is it fair to judge them? I think the, the, the issue here is around, isn't it, that even though there is the, the breakdown of the red wall, as they say, um, predominantly um, the government is back, the government benches in Parliament are predominantly full of Southern MPs and there's little doubt that the, the, the vast majority of the country prior to lockdown um, down south, their atten school attendance figures, according to the uh, data that was released on the 15th of October, um, you know, there are a number of local authorities with exactly the same levels of secondary school attendance as they had pre-COVID. Um, and, and I think that there is, you know, was it called it now? 61%. Yeah. And, and actually, the government has not released, despite uh, uh, I know the TES and Schools Week submitting FOI requests, they don't release on a regular basis the local authority attendance figures. Now, right. why, why would you do that? You know, why would you not do that? You know, um, it's, it's a mystery to me. But so what, what, we're, what, I, what we've been pushing for is that... Um, is that MPs request that information, you know, as a as a, a parliamentary question, which means yeah. that it has to be released. Um, every, I think so everybody. Even, yeah, so even though you, there, there are some authorities that have had no disruption, that actually makes the point very clear that it's not fair. Then, yes, if, absolutely. If every, if every school across the country was equally disrupted, then you could argue that the exams are the same for everyone. Yeah. But it is, and therefore. And I know that some um, have been, some colleagues have been supporting a view that perhaps we, there should be, you know, a premium or a sort of uh, a factor uh, driven into the marking of papers from areas with high COVID. Um, but the problem with that is that, um, I, that we've got examples of schools where um, high COVID actually hasn't affected the art department it's only really affected the english and science departments you know yeah um so it, it in effect you you're going to have to sort of get to a position if you go down that road 
of just of such fine granularity that actually you, you think, well, why don't we just do it by teacher assessment in any case? You know, yeah. um, as we've said before, Frank, the, these exams are a stepping stone. The, they're not the final judgment on you as a, as a student or you as a, a, the rest of your life. They're a, they're a stepping stone. Once you've got past, once you've gone to university and got your degree and moved on from there, nobody asks about your GCSE results. Yeah. It's a stage. It is a stage in post, though, isn't it? It's where you know it's like a fork in the road. Really, there is some. It, you know, it is, and but what what people have objected about is the value of one against another. If it's yeah. exam or it, but it's irrelevant. I think that because nobody compares year on year. No employer, as far as I'm aware, says, "Oh yes, you've got your maths, but." But last, if you'd got the maths the year before, it would have been much harder. Yeah. Nobody's into that kind of detail. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Just data that we've we've got, and because we think data is king, that's that's what we do. Yeah, I I, I do hope. I mean, I I, you know, I I'm not optimistic, but I I would like to think that there is the possibility of just looking again at what is it we're assessing and why are we assessing it you know um because uh i i i regularly see young people who have much more capability than their examination results are showing mm. and you know i do feel as though we're there's there's wasted talent out there that that actually we're not there's a country we're not we're not taken advantage of well, didn't Lord Baker, who didn't he actually say when we when we introduced GCSEs, they were an endpoint. Yes. Now they're not an endpoint. Mm. So, they, you know, really, if you want to push for an exam, it should be at A level or the equivalent. In yeah. uh, that uh, should be the end point. I think I, you know, I I do feel as though this is a, you know, son. I don't think you or I would want to be. The Secretary of State at the moment. Don't, don't you know? Don't get me wrong. But I think that there's something. It seems as if you don't have to do much, Frank. <laughs> I think though that there is this, there is this need to actually, I think, um, reach, try and reach out to the profession to try and help the government come up with a solution. And and I and I think that it won't be the perfect solution. Um, and I think the, the TES ran a, a running a very interesting article today, um, which is basically saying we're not going to find the perfect answer. No. You know, we're going to need compromises. Um, and but taking going into a compromise whereby your position is clear, we're having this or we're doing that, is not the way to get to a consensus. You know, no. so we and, and I'm not not I don't think the profession feels as though. The government wants to really reach out and and talk to those people that are that are that may not share their view on it. You know that there's there's a bit of well we want to reach out but we don't really want to reach out too far because it you know that yeah. it might be a bit difficult you know but actually that's where the consensus is needs to go. You know you need to be brave to take this on and be genuine in saying mm -hmm. look you know I, I don't have a problem in saying well. You know, um, we, we're going to do exams. You know, way back, I would have thought I can understand somebody wanting to draw a line there. But actually, it's, it's you know, when do we get to a point where we say, well, that position is not really tenable? I think the government's got to that because they, they are reaching out at the moment, but it's all under cover of darkness, really. Yeah. And it's who they're reaching out to. Yes. As you yeah. say, people who might happen to share their, their philosophical stance rather yeah. than. Well, I, 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 I don't see them coming to Blackpool and talking no. to the head teachers I've been talking to this morning. I wish no. they would. I wish they would, but they're not. Um, but, I mean, even a compromise that says, yes, we, we recognise um, teacher assessment. We want, to, we want to use that and give the option of an exam because there are some students who will do better at a, at a sit down exam than they may do on a, on a continual assessment. And, and allow the, the better of those two judgments. So that by the time they're coming to do their exam, they actually know what their grade is from teacher assessment and the exam can either push that higher or not. Yeah. So it's yeah. not the high risk test that it is at the moment. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you know, we're not going to get talking. This is all came about through what's caught your eye this week, Stan. Yeah, yeah so what's <laughs> caught your eye, Frank? <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to get much further than what's caught my eye um, this week. So uh, I, I, for me, the issue is around um, how you treat staff and uh, the, the way in which you manage yourself and your emotions um, in order to encourage a positive response from those that you're working with and and there are times when um, we are all as leaders uh, frustrated because you haven't got the right person in your view you haven't got the right team they don't you know nobody seems to be seeing it my way you know all of these things are are, are issues which leadership um you know you you hope good leaders have got strategies to manage it's really interesting, though, isn't it, that we have a system of democracy which enables um, people who have never really had to tackle those sorts of issues can find themselves in, in very senior positions in, in government. And, and actually, it, it, you know, it's a very visible public place when you're suddenly your leadership is, is under examination, you know, and actually the government or the, the, the government is you know, the, the, the main pillar of its work is is really hanging by your leadership, you know. So, you know, it's a it's 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 a weird situation, isn't it? That that that, that actually you, you get tested, but actually the impact is on us all, you know. I, I find it odd with leadership. I, I would regard myself as fairly calm in, in leadership uh, situations, but I can think of the occasions where I have lost my temper uh, only very briefly and, and snapped. And the downside of it is most of those resulted in, in, in better progress. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, if I ever do lose my temper, I usually apologize. Well, I would apologize. Oh, no, no, perhaps it's because, Stan, they, people realise that you don't normally do this. So actually, he really yeah. means that we better, you know... Change behaviour, yeah. It's a change. You know, they probably know also they feel as though deep down there is a really sort of compassionate caring loving kind sort of person <laughs> don't, don't, don't have anybody ask that <laughs> question there, thanks <laughs> i'm i'm for the uh, you know not, not the harsh judgments to help me in my self evaluation <laughs> i'll go for the soft <laughs> kind and soft <laughs> but it's um you know i think just the, the the public nature of uh, of being uh, in government means that you know, and, and I think it's not surprising, is it? At times, it goes wrong. Um, you no, know. and for some, it's probably the first leadership position. Isn't it? It, for for some people who've gone through local government, as in um, councillors and things, and then gone to be an MP, and then suddenly propelled into being a minister. Um, and being technically in charge of people who are highly skilled and highly knowledgeable and very experienced in the area that you're now leading. Yeah. Um, it's uh, my equi a very different equivalent in a school law is an NQT taking over a class that's got a very well established and experienced teaching assistant and having to take control of that person. Yeah. yeah. That, that's often when we work with NQTs. That's often one of the challenges that they that they face. And I think multiplied up a thousand times, <laughs> that's where you might find yourself as when you suddenly thrust with responsibility for civil servants who are very experienced and very knowledgeable, yeah. and also on the negative side, know all the systems and know yeah. how they can. Yeah. I, I faced this um, in Ofsted um, myself when, um, again, I won't tell you the issue, um, but I, I was in discussions with a minister um, about a particular issue. And um, I felt the minister's point was really good. I, you know, I agreed with it. Um, I thought there was more we needed to do over a particular issue. That, when that issue came back and I reported that back to Ofsted, all hell broke loose because in effect what what I was doing was was giving ground you know in a way to the government you know is and, and actually I'd sort of felt the the closure of these it then sort of civil service around me 
to sort of restrict my freedom, you know, to to mm. say things. So, you know, I, I I can understand why at times the government feels as though um, some elements it's frustrating that the thing won't move and flex as as not just this government, any government won't want. But actually, there is something there as well about checks and balances, you know, making sure that at least the organisation I was meant to be representing, you know, were content with that, you know, um, I don't know what would have happened. I mean, they, they basically told me to go back and tell, <laughs> tell them we're not doing that, you know, which, uh, you know, was difficult to do, but I had to do it. Yeah, um, but you can you can understand in those circumstances, and, and please don't get this wrong, you can understand how the comings of this world are seen as a positive force in that they want to break and smash and change and destroy. Unfortunately, they don't seem to have the understanding to rebuild. Mm. So um, I remember Estelle Morris saying to the heads in, in Wakefield, you know, the plan was to, with, with academies and everything else, was to break the system um, and break it into pieces and then rebuild it. But unfortunately, they haven't actually got any plans for how it might rebuild. Yeah. And I, I really do. I, I, while we're on this, and I think we'll perhaps finish on this because that's the 25 minutes gone. So that. I, I, I think my, my view on sponsored academies was I, I was sympathetic to that because that these were these were these were meant to be a shift in in a sort of structure where some local authorities have struggled despite their best efforts to change things and it was as if it was to try and re, you know offer new impetus uh, um, to the change agenda um, i think where it went wrong was when um, successful schools not sponsored looked at the advan apparent advantages that sponsored academies had and then sort of pressured the government, which was then the coalition government, into giving them the flex and freedom to, to do, you know, to become uh, an academy. And, and I think that's, that for me um, was, was, was not, I'm not sure that I was entirely content with that, that decision. But I, I think we, got, we mustn't lose sight with regards to sponsored academies. But actually, these these were in in schools, and I I, I visited a number of them. They were really poor schools, you know. Um, I'm not saying I, I, don't think that. That. I think for me that the the sort of gap in it was um, when, when these schools, most some most all, I'm not sure, did turn around. That there wasn't an option for them then to be taken back into a, a local democratic. Yeah. So once you're out, you're out with no way back in yeah uh and I, i'm not sure what we're creating now as as a multi-academy trust become bigger we're not recreating exactly the same problem that, that they tried to to stop in the first place yeah but without the coherence mm. yeah at the end of the day this is all around do you want to be part of your wider community do you still want to have a relationship with your local authority you know i i, I think we I, I'm totally wedded to that, you know. The, well, I am because of my background, but I, I am anyway. In that, I, I think, I think a lot of schools in the last three or four years have been sold on a, an idea that isn't true. The, the 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 whole autonomy thing is is nothing like it was promised, and I really believe that to be the case. Um, but also that there's no backward step. So you can't say actually this isn't for us, and we'll we'll choose something different. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, next week we are. I think we've got a guest next week. Um, I'm just off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, then we have a run actually up to Christmas of uh, of, of guests. So um, we've got uh, Andy Hodgkinson joining us. Um, we've got Ian Coulson uh, joining us as well. And uh, also, um, I'm pleased to announce that we um, have got Michael Payne from Forum Strategy going to join us in the new year. Um, we're just agreeing the date with that at the moment. Um, so um, we hope you're all going to enjoy your weekend, um, keep keeping safe and uh, doing whatever you can um, to support your schools and communities. Yeah, yeah. Refreshing and recharging the batteries. Yeah.
Okay, well, thank you for joining us and we'll see you all next week. Cheers.